Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. Anthony Hill. And welcome to Through the Eyes of an Elder discussion series. We thank you for joining us here today. And today, this video will probably be the most important video you will ever see in your life. And as we go through this, you're going to understand why as we get to the end. So we just appreciate you coming to join us here today. Please bear with us. we got some scriptures to go through, but we're going to make a legal case for on discussing on which evening did the Messiah renew the blood covenant that's in his blood. It's a blood threshold covenant. So I want to start off by asking some questions. And please take the time to ponder them and consider what these implications are of these questions that are going to be given right now. So the first one I want to ask is, if you eat the Passover meal on the evening of the 15th of Nisan, just exactly what does that symbolize? Have you really given it any weight of thought whatsoever? Second question I want you to ponder, is it a Passover meal or could it possibly be something else? Third point, on which night did Yahshua say, this is the new covenant in my blood? Was it on the 14th before he suffered, or was it on the 15th, the evening after he suffered? If we drink, number four, if we drink the blood wine on the night of the 15th after he suffered, just what covenant is that? I, please, I'm asking you to be honest. And ask yourself these questions and see if you can prove this through Scripture one way or the other. Fifth question, if he proclaimed drinking it before he suffered, do we have a legal right to um, change it to the time after he suffered? This is very important. Number six, if we do have the right to change it, by what authority does that come from? Number seven, where in any of the scriptures does it say that after they placed Yahshua in the grave, that the disciples went back home and ate the Passover? Number eight, if he ate the meal on the night of the 15th, which Yahshua did not authorize, does that mean his life is not in you? This one is really, really very important. Number nine, on which night did Yahshua say that if you do not eat this bread, nor drink his blood, you have no life in you. The 14th or the 15th? And finally, number 10, where in scripture is Yahshua ever identified as a loaf of leavened bread? Is this new covenant of leaven? Is this new covenant that he instituted of leavened bread and not unleavened bread? These are very important questions Anthony, that I think people in the body of Messiah, we're at a time now that they really have to ask themselves the answers to these questions. Yes. Because I think you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody that's asking these kind of questions. There are some out there that are dealing with some aspects of it, but you know, Yahweh gave me these, this revelation about two years ago when we were talking on a Sabbath evening, and all of a sudden he showed me these legalities. Mm-hmm. And you simply cannot prove these things from Scripture if you're holding to the 15th. Yeah. And so this is designed to challenge everybody out there to really decide once and for all, what exactly are you eating and drinking on whichever night you're doing? Have you even considered, even asked yourself, that question, because if you're going to be in this faith, it's important that you do it correctly. Yes. And I've said many, many times, if you don't get the Passover right, which because that's the foundation of our covenant, if you don't get that one right, all the other feast days don't mean anything mm-hmm. because they're built on the foundation of the blood. Mm-hmm. So if you don't get the blood right, then we've got a problem. Yes. Yes. And. I'll venture to say, because we don't have the calendars exactly right right now, um, I'm less concerned about which calendar you adhere to, mm-hmm. but whatever way you are counting, you should know the 14th and what is the 15th. Right. So it's which day are you choosing? Which one are you trying to go towards? Mm-hmm. Are you going towards the one that Scripture says, or are you trying to go to the one that tradition says? Right. And so... Today, we're going to be addressing all of these issues in one way or another. So that's my opening. What would you like to say? 
Uh, for me, this when you talk to me about the subject and <clears throat> the question was about the Last Supper, and it took me back. It really took me back to when I first believed. And this morning, Yahweh gave me a a, a picture of my deliverance because I was truly in bondage, but I was empty and I was running out there in that world and I was seemingly happy. I was going places. I was doing the things that everybody may call fun, doing the traveling, going to eat at the various restaurants. But Yahweh gave me a verse out of the 23rd Psalm this morning said, I have prepared a table for you. Mm. In, in some of your scriptures, he sent his disciples to go prepare a table. And this table is so important to me today because I was running to eat at everybody else's table. I had a table at home. I had the the certain things, the elements you could put on the table to play, but it was something missing. And so my cup, according to David, was full and running over, and it should have been no room to add nothing else into the cup, but I was taking this body, which Yahweh showed me was the cup, and showing me what I was void of. I wasn't going to find it out in that world. So he took me through a process through that prison to deliver me from that bondage. So this subject on the Passover is really near and dear to my soul because I saw my deliverance from the body of sin. And now I'm at a table and I know it's like a memorial every year. I have to sit down and remember what he has done for me, how he delivered me and how he purchased me with his blood. And for me, it was so profound because it led me down this path that David was talking about, a path of righteousness, not for my sake, but for his name's sake. And so I'm really uh, thankful for the message that he put into your heart this morning. And I want to do like we say at, at the table. I want to sit back and take in all the elements of this real, of the original Pesach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you said something in there that gave me pause for thought. And that is when we do sit down to take of the meal, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder, and I, I say this for myself, do I really go back far enough to the beginning where I was delivered mm -hmm. and really give thanks and remember that that event mm -hmm. is what brought me here. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get caught up in um, the ceremony. Yes. And maybe we do remember, but I wonder if we really build it strongly intrinsically inside of us to the point that it convicts the heart that I can't go against this. Yeah. Does it root itself nice and strong inside there? Uh -huh. It's like the conviction. Can you relate? Can you identify with the bondage and the hardness that and the hard labor that was put on Israel in Egypt and the bondage that was put on you in a different way by the same sin for nature that was holding you and you was trying to fight to get free from it, but free to do what? You know, there's a, I wasn't planning on going here. I didn't even think about it until I'm listening to what you just said. Lately or recently, I've dealt with some people that were in the faith mm -hmm. and they left out of the faith. And how, how do I say it? I think sometimes you can be out of the faith for so long that you forgot how good it really was when you were in the faith. Mm -hmm. Your mind gets like so distorted. 
your emotions get so distorted and twisted and made malleable into something else that that mind you're currently in can't seem to bridge the gap and go back to what it felt like when you were riding high on the earth mm -hmm. when you were in your heyday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, this is what I see in the eyes of people when I look in their eyes who are in that state. Mm -hmm. They've gone so far away from the Messiah, they can't, they can't even taste it anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't even know why they want to go back. They know they need to go back. But the taste is gone out of the mouth a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And that's so dangerous when you get to that state of mind. Because you're so close to being totally destroyed that unless Yahweh steps in, that blood covenant isn't going to be able to bring you back. Yes, yes. But the heart is just gone somewhere else, you know? It's kind of like losing a wife to another man, and she's been with him for so many years and got it maybe better over there mm -hmm. in some kind of way, you know, or she's convinced herself <laughs> uh, is better. That you're trying to get her back, but you can't get her back, yeah. you uh, know? <laughs> and she's tasted that already, and now she don't want to come back. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to belabor that too long. I just want to say, because there was something you said that triggered mm -hmm. that thought. So talking about memory, mm -hmm. The question is, do you believe Moses? Mm -hmm. Do you believe Moses, friends? Do you really believe Moses? Because that's where the foundation of this comes from. And so let's read in John chapter 5, verse 46 through 47. It says, for if you believed Moses, you would believe and commit your trust to me, for he wrote in description about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Mm -hmm. Now, in regards to this subject, um, I think there's like between 10 and 12 verses, very specifically in the Gospels, where Yahshua says, I will eat this Passover in the house with my disciples before I suffer. Not mm -hmm. after, before. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why it's the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. It's the last Passover supper. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to eat this again with you until the kingdom. So he's cutting a new covenant in his blood that night. Mm -hmm. But we in the body of Messiah, it's amazing how many people I talked to. No, 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 no. He couldn't have said that. There's no way that could be. There has to be another explanation. Okay. I'm ears. Give me another explanation. <laughs> Did he say what he mean? Did he mean what he said? But they can't never give you an answer. Well, if you can't answer your own statement, how can you be sure that it's true? And why would you hold on to something that's erroneous that you can't prove? Exactly. That right there is a sign there's something going on in your heart that you don't want to let go of. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign of a stronghold. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual stronghold that has got a hold of you that you haven't even come to learn to recognize yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the old saying? A man convicted against his wills of the same opinion still? Yeah. <laughs> we got that rampant in the body of Messiah. Oh, you got anything yes. you want to say about that? Only thing, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this really quick because I want you to, to deal with how you got it laid out. Um, we today, we have... Uh, a little bit more, uh, we would think we have a little bit more information than they did before us in this generation of Yeshua's time that if somebody comes to you and, and um, I've told them about you and I send them over to meet you and when they meet you, they don't recognize that it's you, but I already described you, explained <laughs> you to them, right. told you what right. it's going to do. Now, we can say, oh, they didn't even know him. But how many of us don't know him today True. when we don't keep his word? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we all we can't get so high minded that we got it laid out and then don't really realize when he's talking to you through us. Through this message that he's given you, he's trying to reveal himself to people today. Mm -hmm. So if what you're going to be your excuse, if you don't believe his words, because Moses told you who, who he's coming and what kind of covenant he's coming to make. 
And yet, we're listening to somebody else give you a different covenant. Yeah. I think the average person, in my experience, in mm -hmm. 40 years in this, uh, they don't want to go against the masses. They're too afraid to step out because yeah. they know the implications that the moment they step out, everybody's going to be able to point. He's not one of us anymore. Yes. He's a sellout. He's in bondage. He's under a curse now, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't have nothing to do with you. I well, know. welcome to the club. Yes. Welcome to the club. Well, After a while, it's actually quite a blessing yes. not to be around that. Yes. Once you can break free of it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and actually, you know, I got to say, that's where the rubber really starts to meet the road because you don't have the social structure to influence you in the wrong way anymore. And now you have to learn day by day to pray to the Messiah and walk with him in a relationship without other people getting into the middle of all that and, and, and causing a disruption in that relationship where he can really show you how to walk in this life with him without the structure. Exactly, because you have to ask yourself the question: Whose voice are you listening to? Exactly. You know, um, they didn't know. They claimed they knew Yeshua's father. Yeshua said, "I, I only do what my father tells me to do." Right. If you knew, if <laughs> if you knew my father, then you would know me also. Because right. if he told me to do something, surely he told you to do the same thing that I'm doing. Right. Exactly. And so, but they didn't know him. So he concluded that they didn't know his father. And so we we really have to be really careful on how the enemy inserts different um, things to take control of our. Uh, hearing of our senses, you know, when you know something isn't right, and yet you do it because you're persuaded by the majority. Right, exactly. Um, okay, so point number one, mm -hmm. which night did Joshua eat, drink, and proclaim the new covenant is his blood? This is what we're going to examine right now, along with a few other things, but this is the, the key point. Mm -hmm. So I want to state this. If Let's ponder this question. If the disciples did not eat unleavened bread when the sun set on the 13th and it became the 14th, because we have to remember all days start at mm -hmm. even time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing to me how many of us know when the Sabbath starts on Friday night. When the sun sets on a Friday, mm -hmm. it's now the Sabbath. Right. But when it comes to the Passover, we can't figure that one out. <laughs> you know? Um if the disciples did not eat bread, unleavened bread, on the 13th, 14th, when the sun was setting on the 13th, becomes mm -hmm. the 14th, then they did not eat unleavened bread for the full eight days. Mm -hmm. That means they only ate it for seven days. Right. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because clearly from Torah, what Moses said, Yahweh said to him, there's eight days of eating unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. So in John in Exodus chapter 12, verse 18 through 19, what I get out of this is making a covenant by extortion cuts us off. Mm -hmm. Now the Jews have an expression that leavened bread is the bread of extortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll get into that in just a second, but let's read verse 18. It says, In the first month on the 14th day of the at, at evening, as it turns dark in the Hebrew, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening as it turns dark. Mm -hmm. So when the 21st day comes to a close and it's starting to turn dark, it now becomes the 22nd of the month. Right. So you don't eat any more bread after the sun has set right. on the 21st. Right. Okay. So let's take a look at this word extortion mm -hmm. because leaven represents extortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Extortion is the wrongful use of persuasion to gain control over an individual or an entity. Mm -hmm. Now, the argument is, is that the Last Supper could not have been a Passover meal because he ate leavened bread. Mm -hmm. Well, if he ate leavened bread on the 14th of Nisan, which is the Passover, then... He ate the bread of extortion, mm -hmm. and he caused his disciples to do the same, mm -hmm. which means they all took on a spirit of extortion, and they were brought under control of the spirit that did that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that don't make no sense. And we're going to drive some other arguments home about the bread and what it means as we go along. But I wanted to stop right here because this nullifies the argument that Yahshua ate leavened bread on that evening with his disciples. And we got more stuff coming that's going to disprove that. Mm -hmm. So in verse 19, for seven days, no leaven as swelling through fermentation shall be found in your houses. Since whoever eats this, eat is, whoever eats what is leaven, the bread of extortion, that's what it is in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. okay? Chametz is the bread of extortion. That same person shall be cut off. So should have Yahshua and the disciples been cut off on the evening of the Last Supper because they ate leavened bread of extortion? And who's doing the extorting? That's another question. We won't get into that now. So the same sort of person shall be cut off through making a bargained covenant. So if they ate leavened bread on the Last Supper on the 14th, the evening of the 14th, then they bargained a covenant. Mm -hmm. So was Yahshua cut break, making two different covenants on the Last Supper? I don't think so. From the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. So I made a chart that basically shows two different Passovers mm -hmm. in the Gospels, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the Gospels. And so we're going to take a moment here and just kind of look at this a little bit. So on the top line, I want to give people a chance to kind of look this over and figure out what everything, because it is a little busy, but we're going to explain this. So on the first red line horizontally, starting when the Nissan 13th ends by that vertical line and the 14th is starting, which is the Passover, and it goes all the way over to the seventh day. Um, well, it goes over to the 21st which is actually the eight days of unleavened bread. Uh, that's how Yahshua and the disciples kept it. Mm -hmm. And then when you go down below, and we'll examine this a little bit more later, the Jews kept it the next night, mm -hmm. starting on the evening of the 15th of Nisan, when the 14th sun sets, it became the 15th, and they go all the way to Nisan 22, which is a nothing day in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And that, but that's their eight days of Passover that they called the Passover. So this is a visual um, description here so people can understand the two different Passovers that were going on as the apostle or the disciples at the time were describing it because they used the term the Jews Passover. Mm -hmm. That's different than the Passover and the Last Supper that Yahshua told them he was going to eat with his disciples. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful to make sure we make a, a distinction in the difference between the two of them. This chart will come up again later. So I just want to take a minute here for people to be able to look this over a little bit while I bloviate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Note that there is a total of eight days of eating unleavened bread. The 14th day starts at the end of the 13th, once the sun sets below the horizon and continues until the 21st day. Mm -hmm. That's what Yahshua and the disciples did. Right. Now, something to note in history, the Jewish writers Josephus and Philo used the term artus mm -hmm. to describe the matzah of the Passover meal in their writings. Mm -hmm. They didn't refer to artus in the Greek as leavened bread. Mm -hmm. They referred to it as unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. So they knew in their day what artus meant. When we get into the modern Greek, things start to change because traditions change and, you know, the churches came about and they use leavened bread even in the Messianic congregations on a Friday night when they hold the bread up, the kala. Mm -hmm. That's not correct. Mm -hmm. It should be unleavened bread, not leavened bread. Mm -hmm. The priest offered unleavened bread on the evening of the Sabbath in the temple on Friday nights, not leavened bread. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is what tradition does, right. okay? Because the 12 loaves symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. 
and they're not leavened. Mm -hmm. They're unleavened mm -hmm. in Yahweh's eyes. Mm -hmm. So the bread Yahshua said was his body is also referred to as the bread of affliction. So there's a difference. The leavened bread is the bread of extortion, mm -hmm. and the unleavened bread is the bread of affliction. Mm -hmm. Two different purposes altogether. Although you will get afflicted if you're eating leavened bread on Passover, mm -hmm. the devil will make sure he gets a <laughs> hold of you and he afflicts you for being disobedient. Oh, yes. Okay? All right. Which is why it is broken. So the affliction is why he breaks. And this is another thing. In the Gospels, it says that Yahshua took the bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. Mm -hmm. You can break unleavened bread, but you can't tear it. Right. When you have a leavened bread, you can tear it, but you can't break it. Mm -hmm. This is something people are just not thinking about. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, anyway, just a point of notation. So, in Luke chapter 22, verse 15 and 16, this is what I got out of it. The last supper, the last Passover supper meal before he suffers. Mm -hmm. Brethren, friends, there's no two ways about it. There, you can't play the game anymore that tradition has dealt you the deck of cards of. He clearly, as I said earlier, in so many verses said that he will eat the Passover and he had fervent desire to do it before he suffers. Mm -hmm. It's not just the last supper. It's the last Passover supper mm -hmm. because he had other Passover suppers with him in years prior. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is why this is the last one until the time of the kingdom comes. So in verse 15, it says, then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover, not the last one, not the one that comes later the next year after this one, but this one be with you before prior to that, which I suffer. Mm -hmm. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled and completed in the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, that's a whole nother discussion because the whole point of the blood covenant means that Yahweh has obligations to us. Mm -hmm. And those obligations, when it's talking about completed, right. what it means is, is that when the end of the tribulation comes and the Babylonian system has done all these atrocities to Yahweh's people mm -hmm. and to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. okay, then by blood covenant, he has a responsibility to come and defend us and vindicate us by destroying our enemies. Yes. That's when it gets completed. Mm -hmm. that, that's a whole nother discussion, prophetically speaking, in the kingdom of Yahweh. Luke twenty two nineteen. This now will start to deal a little bit with the Artus. So in verse 19, it says, and he took bread, which is showbread, mm -hmm. and the loaf is circular. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean like the loaf of of uh, what is it, uh, Wonder Bread that we go into the grocery store to get that's a loaf. That's our picture. That's not what was written in the Greek and the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. That's not how it was done. It was a circular piece of bread, and it was unleavened. Gave thanks and broke it. He didn't mm -hmm. tear it as a loaf of raised bread. He broke it. Mm -hmm. He snapped it. And gave it to them saying, this is my blood body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, mm -hmm. which is what we talked about in the opening comments about reflecting back. Right. You know, about what got you here in the first place. You yes. got anything you want to say? No, you go. You tongue tied. <laughs> What's going on? Um, you got to jump in when you got to jump in because uh -huh. this is like a free for all, like a rumble, you know. I'm taking in the elements. Okay. All right. Okay. Just want to be sure. Mm hmm Okay, in Exodus 29, verse 23 through 24, raising up the loaf, the concept of raising up the loaf. Mm -hmm. So we see in verse 23, of loaf, a, breaking in, of loaf, a circular plain piece of bread. Mm -hmm. There you go. As the showbread, one cake that is punctured, made of oil from the olive, and one wafer, a thin cake, from the basket of unleavened bread 
not soured with yeast as used for the Passover. Mm -hmm. That is before Yahweh. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the rub. And you shall put all these into the hands of Aaron and in, hit in the hands of his sons, and you shall wave by raising up and down and rocking back and forth of them as a wave offering by shaking it before Yahweh. Okay? Now, that's what you do with the bread. Mm -hmm. So we, we're not told specifically in the Gospels that I can figure that Yahshua did exactly that. Mm -hmm. But as a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, he would have done what the high priest would have done in the temple mm -hmm. with the unleavened bread. Because that's what the nature of a wave offering is. Mm -hmm. This is how it's done. Mm -hmm. This is why it's the last Passover meal. Mm -hmm. We're driving home this point. It was not just the last supper. It was the last Passover supper meal. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, let's go to point two. When do you receive life? On the 14th or the 15th? And does it matter? Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Stop and think about it, brother, friends. Does it really matter on what night you do it, 14th or 15th? Do you have the right to just choose which way you want to do it? Well, let's take a look at the mandate that Yahshua has put into place that he did with his disciples. So in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, on this night, a threshold blood covenant was consecrated. Mm -hmm. Likewise, he also took the cup, in verse 20, of a lot or fate and drought after supper, the evening meal, a feast supper. This is mm -hmm. not just a regular meal, mm -hmm. which is what they argue. This is a feast meal. Mm -hmm. This is the feast of Passover. Mm -hmm. And we can't seem to get this, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fighting against that. And people got to ask themselves a the question, why am I fighting so hard about what's so clearly written in Scripture? Mm -hmm. That in itself is an exercise in your mental state, in mm -hmm. your spiritual state. Mm -hmm. Why are you fighting it? Did you even ask yourself that question when you're presented with these? We asked a bunch of questions from the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is going to be what we're doing now, okay? So you got to ask yourself the question, can I refute this mm -hmm. when it's so clear? If it is clear, why would I try to refute it if it's clear? And you 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 bring up some interesting points. And it's not like that I'm saying this I'm I'm still in the mind before I came into the knowledge. Uh -huh. When you lay it out and he say, Do you believe Moses? That was your first question. And if you believe Moses and you read when Moses said the Passover is supposed to start, that Yahweh told him. And Moses just didn't come up with this. Yahweh told Moses at which time it's supposed to start, what to do, how long to do it. And so if I'm seeing Yeshua saying he's sitting at this table, then I got to come to the conclusion that he's following the same um, system that his father set up for right. him to do it because <laughs> it was done. And now he's telling you the covenant now is in my blood. I'm that lamb mm -hmm. that came. We read the scriptures. He's the lamb of Yahweh that came to take away the sin. Well, I'm the lamb now. This is my blood in this covenant. And, and we sit here and we read this stuff and we see it in there. So if he's saying it's Passover meal, then you know it's a feast. Right, right. And, you know, while you're talking, I'm thinking to myself, now, who did Moses get these instructions from? Mm -hmm. He got it from the one who became Yahshua yes. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So hold on now. Let's back up this truck a little bit. Why would Yahshua tell him on Mount Sinai to do it on the 14th, but he refused to do it on the 14th when he's here in the flesh, and the disciples went and did it on the 15th? Come on now. Have ever is anybody stopped and think about the implications of that? Uh, uh, are, are we serving a um 
a, an Elohim of contradiction mm -hmm. without explanation? And if we are, ain't nobody gave me no interpretation of that yet. And I know you ain't going to find it anyway. It don't make no sense. It, it, None it. of this stuff about the 15 makes any sense. It holds no weight whatsoever. And it's important. Not That's why we're sitting here doing this, because it's really important. Your soul was purchased with this event. Right. And if you forget about when your soul was purchased, it's just like forgetting about your anniversary. Mm -hmm. Your wedding anniversary, mm -hmm. uh, your first, uh, any one of your kids' birthday. Mm -hmm. it, you might as well forget those dates and pick another date to do it on. Right. Also. Right. But those are dates that we proudly remember and write down in books and on calendars and put it in your notes and reminders on your on your phones and your different devices. But why we can't do the same for something just important as your salvation? Exactly. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day. And they were asking me about the end times and the beast and stuff like that. And then somehow, I don't know, remember how, but we got into the discussion of um, the various religions, you mm -hmm. know. And I said to the person, I said, listen, all the world's religions, the isms of Hinduism and Islamism and Christianity and Catholicism and Judaism, they all come from Babylon. Mm -hmm. Their root, their very foundation comes from Babylon. And we're coming to a time now where Yahweh's saying, I've had enough of the Babylonian system. Mm -hmm. And when this beast comes along, you're going to have to make some serious decisions about which system are you going to follow? Mm -hmm. Yahweh's system or the Babylonian system? And the person got nervous and said, wow, I, I'm kind of scared because my children are going to see this. Mm -hmm. I go, you doggone straight, they're going to see it. <laughs> I said, that's why it's so important that everybody get off their fat ke keisters mm -hmm. and start getting serious mm -hmm. about what covenant have you cut with right. these isms? Mm -hmm. Because Yahshua says, Come out of her, my people of Babylon, mm -hmm. lest you partake of the uh, the plagues that are going to come upon it. Mm -hmm. And so the the problem is everybody likes to think, oh, we got a little more time. How do you know you got right, a little more time? Right, right. First of all, what if you did have a little more time? Let's go with that one for a moment, mm -hmm. okay? Do you understand how long it takes to get rid of this so that this and that can work in your life, mm -hmm. it takes a while to dismantle this thing, mm -hmm. to deconstruct it. Mm -hmm. Now, Yahweh can do anything in a moment, but it takes time to make that transition. It takes time for this natural mind to learn the ways of Yahshua, the narrow path, not the broad path. Mm -hmm. And so even if you had a little time, you aren't privileged to know just how much long that really is. Yes. Are you some kind of an authority to think you can keep procrastinating, procrastinating? How many scriptures did Yahshua give us that you're going to be like a bird trapped in a trap? A snare is going to come upon you mm -hmm. when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. But his people are going to know when that time has come. Mm -hmm. Because I think as even Paul said so, but you, brethren, are not in ignorance that these Moedim, these shadow pictures, mm -hmm. should overtake you as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. This is why Passover is so important, because if you can't get the Passover right, you don't have a foundation to understand prophetically what all the other feasts are. He's not going to give you the understanding if you insist on rebelling against his true Passover. Mm -hmm. and, and what's ironic about it, he knew it was his last meal. He knew. He knew it, and he was prepared for it. But he was preparing a people to sit down for the sacrifice that we all may have to make one day. Right. We may have to lay our life down one day. If we're going to know before we lay out that was our last meal, the people on death row, they ask them what they want to eat before their last meal. Right. 
they know what their last meal going to be. Mm-hmm. Unless yeah. they get a stay of execution. Yeah. <laughs> unless, yeah. Uh, uh, either unless they pass away before they get there. Right. You know? Right. But ironically, those are the only people that really know this is going to be my last meal before I die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But we, we around here, we've been prepared to be a living sacrifice. But we're not sacrificing for him. We're sacrificing for everything else. Mm-hmm. The Bible say the what the um, Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to Yahweh. What, We're what actually going to kind of get into that a little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I forgot about that. I want to get ahead of it. Yeah. But, this, this brother it, and friends, this gets a little deeper as we go in. You know, My last supper in that body of sin, uh-huh. I didn't know that was going to be my last supper in that body of sin. Uh-huh. He could have took me out of the world that very day, but his mercy has sustained me to be sitting here today, you know, but he brought me into the knowledge through following Moses. All this stuff was foreign, you know, but when I began to pick the book up and read, I had to follow my father Abraham right out of that country into a country that was strange. I now know nothing about this country. Mm-hmm. And and you read in there, he said, even the strangers that in there with you, they can't even eat leavened bread. Huh? And I had to come into this stuff. I can't eat leavened bread. People say, why didn't you stop eating leavened bread? Because I was commanded to stop. Because it's a deliverance happened to me. Mm-hmm. And it took a process for me to get stuff for him to cleanse me of a lot of stuff, a lot of things that he was cutting cords away, deleavening me. Right. Little by That's little. That's a shadow picture, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he got me out to this place and tried to teach me his ways. Huh? And I, post, I today I sit here and I'm supposed to forget about it. No, every day, this thing, every year, this thing takes me back. But this this subject, when you picked it, it it really hit to the core. Oh, well, that, that's the intended the purpose. The price that, I, that purchased my soul. Right. Blood. <laughs> so in Matthew 26, 17 through 19, what I put here is this is clearly a Passover covenant meal with unleavened bread. Mm-hmm. And come back to this for a little bit. So in verse 17, now on the first, before the beginning of the day of the feast. Mm -hmm. See, in the Greek, this is very tricky because some words like the word first, Mm -hmm. you read it in your English Bible. It sounds like the first day of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's saying. The word first doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. It means before the beginning of the first day of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. How are they going to come to Yahshua and say, on the first day of unleavened bread, how do you want us to prepare the Passover? Mm -hmm. It's too late. Right. You're already into the feast at this point. Right. This is why it's so important to know what the Greek is saying. Mm -hmm. That word first is rendered incorrectly Mm -hmm. in your English translation. Mm -hmm. It means before the first the beginning of the first day of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. That only makes sense. Yes. You prepare before, not during. Right. You know? All right. So let's go on. The day of feast is not, the day of the feast is not in the original text and was added. But okay. Of the unleavened bread that is uncorrupted. Okay. So the first day is a feast. So the Passover is the first day of unleavened bread. Mm Mm-hmm. As far as the first day you're going to eat unleavened bread, it is not the days of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. It is the first of eight days Mm -hmm. that you're going to eat unleavened bread. This is what it's trying to get across. And they're telling you it's uncorrupted. Mm -hmm. Even in the the Greek, Mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, we read about the bread of extortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it being un- then the other bread, the, the matzah being uncorrupted. Mm-hmm. So even in the Greek, it's saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. So clearly, when the disciples are saying we're going to come together for this thing, it's for the uncorrupted bread, mm-hmm. bread mm-hmm. which is unleavened. Mm-hmm. The disciples came to Yahshua saying to him, where, in what locality do you want us to prepare for you to eat for him, mm-hmm. Yahshua, mm-hmm. to eat the Passover 
and the special sacrifice connected to it. There you go. There's the lamb. Mm -hmm. There's the lamb. Mm -hmm. It's a special sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's not just a regular sacrifice. It's a special sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That makes it the lamb Mm -hmm. because that's the shadow picture of him. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, Joshua, Mm -hmm. my time is at hand. I will keep, which means fulfill by observing and performing the Passover and the special sacrifice connected to it at your house with my disciples. Can't get any more plain than that. Friends, if you're not accepting these words of Yahshua, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And it's time to wake up. It's time to come out of Talmudic Judaism, traditions of the elders. We've been handed a bunch of lies. Yahshua says, in vain do you worship me, teaching the doctrines and commandments of men and making the Torah of no effect through their traditions and many such things you do. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? How do you write that off? How do you consciously, once you hear this now, how do you consciously decide in your mind, oh, hell no, I'm not going with that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard so-called believers in Yahshua and the Hebraic Mm -hmm. roots Mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. It couldn't possibly mean that. Mm -hmm. There ain't no way it meant that. Okay, give me a plausible explanation to the contrary. Oh, I can't do that. I'll have to search out the scriptures. You mean to tell me you've been in the faith all these years and you still don't understand the subject? What in the world are you celebrating when you do it? If you're saying now, after 10 years in the faith, you still don't understand the subject. They don't believe Moses. They don't believe Moses, Baruch Hashem. That's correct. Because that is the foundation. Because he told them the 15th day. It's the first day of unleavened bread. Exactly. It's a Sabbath. Exactly. A high day. Uh And the Passover is not a high day. Mm -hmm. That's some of the other arguments we don't have time to get into. Mm -hmm. They said there's no way that um, that could have been the Passover because Judas went out with the money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Passover. It's a preparation day, the Passover Mm -hmm. on the 14th. You're allowed to go out and work Mm -hmm. or do whatever. Mm -hmm. But when the evening comes, that's when you're renewing your contract. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That didn't change. It's still in the scriptures. (laughs) But who changed it? Talmud of Judaism. Yes. But I'm just saying. We're going to get into that. Yes. We're going to get into it. I I say by what authority. Brethren and friends, Mm -hmm. whether you realize or not, we're walking you down into the water. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go deeper and deeper into the water until the water is going to come over your head, Mm -hmm. metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. And you're going to drown by the time we're done with this today. You're going to drown with a lot of proof that's going to disturb your mind. You're going to be baptized. It's going to disturb the false teachers out there, which we've talked about. (laughs) We're feeding you a bunch of hogwash. Mm -hmm. They're going to be Mickfoot. They're going to be Mickfoot. So the disciples did as Joshua had directed them in verse 19, Mm -hmm. and they prepared the last supper with leavened bread, Anthony. No. (laughs) (laughs) They put the leavened bread on that table. No, that's not what it says. And they prepared the Passover. Yes. There you go. Now, let's take a look at this word defining artus, because this is the big word they all like to use. And I want to bring out a little something that Yahweh showed me Mm -hmm. that people have taken hook, line, and sinker. And uh, this one phrase I'm going to touch on Mm -hmm. um, can mean that, but it also could mean something else, okay? So um, the word artus is number 142 in the Greek, which means bread or a loaf. But we already talked about how a loaf is made circular. It's not the long bread of loaf that we get in the grocery store today. Mm -hmm. That's the Western Gentile mentality. That's not what it is. But one of the main interpretations of Artus in the Greek, and any of you can look it up, I didn't add this in, is the showbread. Mm -hmm. It's the showbread, okay, which was unleavened. Every Friday afternoon, the priest would would bake 
brand new loaves of unleavened bread, 12 of them, mm -hmm. and put them on the table of the show bread, mm -hmm. representing the 12 tribes of Israel as being unleavened. Okay? Now, the reason why David could come in with his army, because when they were hungry, to eat the bread, because it was now classified as common bread because it was from a week earlier. Mm -hmm. So they were allowed to eat that because mm -hmm. the priest had to remove that bread from the week before mm -hmm. and replace it with brand new bread. Mm -hmm. Like when Yahweh every day sent manna mm -hmm. down from heaven mm -hmm. every single day, mm -hmm. gave them new bread. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the bread that sat around, it would decay. Right. Right. So you didn't want to eat that. But I want to touch on this phrase at bread as raised. Because everybody tries to say, see, 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 that that that's a that's leavened bread. I don't see where it says leavened bread. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be and or mm -hmm. for argument's sake, I'll let that one go. Mm -hmm. But we read earlier about how the showbread was raised. Mm -hmm. It was raised and rocked back and forth and shook it mm -hmm. and up and down. Mm -hmm. So it's in parentheses. How come it didn't say as leavened? Mm -hmm. Doesn't say that. I'm not saying it can't be used as that. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is, could it be that this word is actually being used in the context that this showbread was a loaf, which is circular, that is used to be raised up in the air. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Yes, inquiring minds want to know. So, here's another question. If Yahshua ate leavened bread at the last Passover meal, supper meal, on the 14th, evening of the 14th, then it breaks with the Exodus account and it breaks with the spiritual meaning of him being unleavened bread that came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. How can he call himself the unleavened bread that came down from heaven, but on the, the Last Supper meal, which is on the 14th, which classifies it as a Passover evening, how he can switch it to leavened bread of extortion? Now I'm the leavened bread. Not unleavened bread. Right. I'm, so now he becomes... my body, which is leavened. Now he's the bread of extortion of corruption. Mm -hmm. Come on now, man. How long do we have to be in the faith that we can't see the shadow pictures and the emblems of what we're given on these Moedim? Mm -hmm. Have we not learned yet? Has the devil gotten so a hold of our minds through the traditions of Judaism in this particular case that we can't, we can't even see it? Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, I've met people recently that have left the faith for years and they just can't get back. The devil has got them so strong mm -hmm. in his grips and under his control in their mind and their emotions, they can't get back to the original place anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's why you become the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You lose your identity. Mm -hmm. I, man, I wouldn't want to be in that kind of torment. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's like I told one person. I don't have no magic wand to wave for you that I can snap my fingers and you go immediately back to what you were years ago, mm -hmm. riding real nice with the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to pave hell mm -hmm. to get back to that place because mm -hmm. he wants you to learn a lesson. Don't you ever do that again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to snatch you out, but you're going to have to go through hell to get back. Mm -hmm. Because I want to make sure you learn your lesson and you don't ever do this again. Because mm -hmm. we're running out of time. You yeah. can't keep playing this game over and over again. You can't be, keep being this double-minded person. So let's read in Exodus chapter 34, verse 25. No leavened bread could be eaten on the Passover supper. You shall not offer as a slaughter the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. That's it. There you go. And we read in the gospel, it was a feast supper mm -hmm. with this special sacrifice, which mm -hmm. is the lamb. Mm -hmm. That is extortion bread. There you go again, that comets in the Hebrew. Nor shall the sacrifice of the feast, that is a solemn, 
of Passover, the festival of the victim, be left until morning as the break of day. There you go. There's your context. So there's no way that Yahshua could have eaten leavened bread the evening before he, he suffered. There's no way. The evidence is not there. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Question. Why would Yahshua give leavened bread to the disciples and declare that his new covenant, the bread of corruption? Because mm -hmm. that technically is what he should have called it. Mm -hmm. I'm making a new covenant with you, and this is the covenant of corruption because I'm giving you leavened bread. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Because the implications of all this is he couldn't have been the Messiah, according to the Gospels. Yeah. There's no way. Remember, everybody agrees that he died on the afternoon of the 14th. Mm -hmm. Well, if you back the clock up until the, e the evening time, that's just as much the 14th as it was during the day. Mm -hmm. Now, I actually had somebody tell me one time that the 14th is only a three-hour event. I said, what? It's only a three-hour event. So you're telling me Nissan 14 only lasted three hours? Yeah, as an event. So you're going to tell me that when they beat him at early morning on the 14th after the his interrogation by Pilate, that the 40 lashes was not significant enough to be an event. And his carrying of the execution stake out to uh, Golgotha was not qualified enough to be in an event. To, to hang on the execution stake for, what, almost six hours? Mm -hmm. From six to the ninth hour. Was not constituted to be anywhere near relevant to be in an event. It was only an event when he gave up the Ruach and then the clouds, you know, the clouds mm -hmm. dissipated and all that after all mm -hmm. that. And then they put him into the grave. That's all that was. It. Nothing that he went through was not important. I would say that from three o'clock to six o'clock was not an event. He was gone. Mm -hmm. The only event that took place is they took him down from the execution stake. They, they anointed his body. And then they placed him in the grave before the sun set, mm -hmm. before it became the 15th, which is the first day of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that? No, nope, because also it, they was commanded. The yes. There was a, a law that they couldn't leave a body hanging. Exactly. And the sun set on it. Right. They, they had couldn't. to get it down according to their own exactly. law and traditions, exactly. you know. So when you add everything up, the only thing is keeping a person away from uh, giving in and accepting the truth is pride. Pride. When you just finally break everything on down. That's it. If you don't yeah. believe yeah. Moses, you don't, you don't, then how you gonna hear Yeshua's words? Mm -hmm. So if you close your ears from doing that, it's just simply pride. It's simply pride. Amen. You can't say it any better than yeah. that. Just and, break it and all that, down. that's the whole point of this, in part. It's not just the legal things we're laying down here to mm -hmm. these questions. But at the end of the day, friends, are you willing to be honest with yourself? Yes. Or do you want to continue living a lie? Because, you know, it's like I said to this other person the other day. I said, listen, how long do you sail on that boat? Because... They were actually the conversation started up about how everybody they're meeting is bitten into lies mm -hmm. and they're convinced that the lies are truth. And we went through this in the, I think, in one of the last one or two videos that we did that Yahweh's going to send a great delusion that they have to believe the lie. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way you're going to believe the big lie is you start off with the smaller lies. And once the devil gets enough of the small lies in there, when the big one and the final one comes, when the beast comes, mm -hmm. then you'll believe that one because mm -hmm. you've already been prepared along the way. And you're saying in your mind, oh, no, not me. But if you can't disprove all this stuff and you still want to hold on to it, that just goes to show you 
You have not played an active role in getting the devil out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Because he corrupts us through the doctrine. You know, we're going to get into a little more of that yes. as we go along. So in Matthew 26, verse 18, we're going to read here where a lamb was eaten on this night. We kind of went through it already a little bit, but we're going to rehash again in case they didn't catch it. And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep fulfilled by observing and performing the Passover. I think we already read this. I may have already read this. I'm sorry about that. Didn't scroll. Um, John 6, 53 through 54, if you want life, you have to drink the blood. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to drink the blood. In verse 53, it says, Then Yahshua said to them, Most assuredly, Amen, Amen. He says it twice mm -hmm. for emphasis. I say, unless you eat the meat of the flesh of Son of Man and drink his blood. So you have to eat a lamb. Mm -hmm. You can't be eating chicken Brisket. or or St. Louis uh, pork ribs or whatever they call that, you Ain't know, brisket. Bri or brisket <laughs> or, uh, or anything else. You have to eat the lamb because that's what he did. Mm -hmm. OK, you can't separate the lamb from the Passover mm -hmm. just because we're in the New Testament dispensation. And drink his blood, the juice of the grace for the atoning. So that's the purpose of it is for the atoning. Mm -hmm. You have no life in as a state of rest in you. Mm -hmm. No life. So the question becomes again, if you're drinking the blood on the 14th, that has one implication. Mm -hmm. But if you're drinking it on the 15th, after he was put into the grave, that has another implication. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, do I, like we said earlier, do I have a right to change the nights? Mm -hmm. And if I don't have the right, what covenant am I really cutting when I drink the blood, eat the body and the lamb on the 15th? Mm -hmm. We're going to get into that. Moreover, who eats my flesh Meat stripped from the skin and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Mm -hmm. So, technically speaking, if you refuse to do this the way he prescribed it, the way Moses prescribed it, mm -hmm. and you want to do it when you damn well please, you want to do it on the day that you consecrate instead of the day that he consecrates, mm -hmm. can you honestly say, is it possible I don't have any life in me, mm -hmm. even though I'm doing it every year? Mm -hmm. That's something you really need to contemplate. Mm -hmm. The Torah commands that the Passover may not be eaten with leavened bread. Here's another one. Deuteronomy 4, 4 verse 2 and 8 through 9. Are we scraping off the 14th to substitute it for the 15th? Yes. Let's look at what this says. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take or lessen it by scraping off from it. Scraping it off. Okay? That you may keep by placing a hedge of thorns around the commandments of Yahweh, your Elohim, which I command and appoint as a charge to you. Mm -hmm. This is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's your job. He's been he's handed it to you. You, as we talked about a few times back, about not having the crown removed from your head, mm -hmm. like what happened with King David. Mm -hmm. There were dire consequences for yes. that. He's saying, you now have charge of this. Mm -hmm. You decide what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, and what great nation is there that has such statutes, appointed tasks, and righteous judgments of mishpat, which is a favorable or unfavorable verdict, as are in all his law of Torah, which I set before you this day, only take heed to yourself and be diligent to keep yourself, lest you forget and be oblivious from memory. You talked about that before. Mm -hmm. The things your eyes have seen, mm -hmm. which you talked about, mm -hmm. okay? Unless they depart, in other words, the things you've seen, mm -hmm. they depart as being plucked from your heart all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. 
And that's exactly what I'm seeing people do. How quickly you forgot. You were once over here, now you're way over there. Mm -mm. And don't realize what's been taken from you. A treasure. I, you know, uh, that's an interesting discussion in itself. Mm -hmm. Because I think on some level, you know what was taken from you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why would you be seeking to get it back? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's as much of an issue as the wanting to seek it back part. Because, oh, let me say. So I used to love fishing when I was young. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's okay. I, you know, my father's always bugging me to go fishing with him, mm -hmm. you know. And mostly for the sake of him, I go so I can spend time with him. But it, I got other things I'd rather do. But developing the relationship with him, which is what he loves to do, is more important. So I have to sit there and I have to think to myself when I'm invited, I really don't want to go. And I'm trying to remember how much fun it was when I used to do it when it was fun. Mm -hmm. And so I'm here, but I was there. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get my mind and my emotions from where I'm at, not feeling like it, to getting back to where I used to like. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I can't get there. So what I say to myself is, okay, I can't get back to that passion anymore, okay? But I'm going to still do it anyway for him. Mm -hmm. And I'll learn to like it even just being there while I'm there. But right now, I'm not really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's more about, because this is the struggle that I see everybody have. When they got away from this stuff, they, don't, they remember what it used to be like, but the passion to want to get back there is there, but at the same time, they can't seem to get back there. Yeah, uh, he was, that's what he was showing me this morning. It was like, okay, I had the wife, the family, the job, and, you know, but it was like something was empty. And I would have to go outside of that relationship to try to fill it. But that was just a momentary patch, but I would have to keep going. And so therefore it put a void in the relationship that I really should have had. He told me my cup was full. It wasn't nothing else I could put in it, but in order to put something else in it, I had to leave something empty so I can pour some in it. So I wasn't putting all my heart and all of my love into this relationship. The uh, Shema say, with all your heart, huh? You should love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And are we doing that? You know, are we trying to replace it with something else? We filling this cup with right. something. The cup should be already filled with everything that you needed. When they prepared this table, he was when he came to the table, it was already prepared. He didn't need to add anything else to it. Yeah, that's so a good point. That's yeah. why you just read, mm -hmm. don't add nothing to don't it. Don't add nothing to it. Or take nothing away from it. Right. The table is already prepared. The Passover is already instituted. It's already set when you sit down well, and you eat do it. Sit down, you man. can't add another day to it. Right. And take away that day and replace it with another day. It can't be done. Well, then it's not his day. It's your day. It's another day. Just like the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. they do we replace the Sabbath? I mean, if you're going to do that with the Passover, why don't we do it with the Sabbath? They did it. Yep. I mean, why be hypocritical about it? Right. I'm not going to do Sabbath anymore on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it on Sunday mm -hmm. like the heathens do. Yeah. Uh, any day of the week. <laughs> or any day of the week, yeah. which some people subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, listen, uh, friends, uh, I, we're not by any means trying to say this is easy. And we're not trying to be condemnation, even though our language is hard. Mm -hmm. Okay? But for crying out loud, somebody got to shake some people. Because we already know from Scripture that in the end times, they're going to heap up teachers, which we've talked about, mm -hmm. who will whisper soft things in their ears. 
Have you been listening to too many soft things and not things that are challenging you and stretching you to come to a higher level, which in your heart, you know, you need. You just have to call it. I know you want it, Mm -hmm. but you're too scared to death to challenge the traditions that have been handed Mm -hmm. to you. You have to call a lie out. You have to call it out. And, and, And you don't have to, uh, do it. You show the lie by your works. Right. You know, um, I'm no longer going to eat the fruit of lies. You know, uh, that fruit is not beneficiary to me. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's never going to satisfy me. That's why I keep running until it, nothing satisfy me. Now I'm out here alone. I'm out here alone and I'm struggling and I'm looking back over there. You understand? You left your first love and you looking over there and somebody's got you jealous because somebody else has came into your house that you used to live in, mm-hmm. sleeping in your bed mm-hmm. that you used to sleep in with your wife. Mm-hmm. Huh? You jealous now. Oh, that's that's a hard one. Yeah, that's a hard one. You can't ever erase that one from your mind once you have visualized that one. Come back. Just come back. Yeah, it's easy to come mm-hmm. back in a certain way. Yes, sir. Just Don't. Yahweh needs to know you're not playing around. You're really serious. And, 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 I, and that's the other thing. So many people I talk to, they talk a good game. Mm-hmm. The words sound really good. But then inside of there, I'm like, but are you really serious? And most of the time, I find they're not really serious enough mm-hmm. to actually do it and discipline themselves and get back to where they used to be. Because Yahweh is able to graft them back in again. He you can know? change everything uh, around. I'm you not know? boasting. He wants his people to come back. Uh, against the natural branch. No, no, I'm no. I'm not boasting in no means no, only, no. but man, I'm so happy that you did move out the way so I could come in and, and, and get on this. And that's uh, why it happened. On this route. Because they were be nourished. Because yeah. they rejected, they <laughs> took you and put you in there. Yeah. So we are expendable. Mm-hmm. We do have a say in the matter. As I said before, I commission you with the tax. Yes. You know? All right. Third point. Which covenant are you proclaiming when you eat and drink on the 15th? Which covenant are you truly proclaiming when you eat on and drink on the 15th? So we're going to look now at the two different Passovers that we briefly touched on in the chart. Mm-hmm. So in John 18, 28, we're dealing with a different Passover meal. So clearly there are two separate calendars mm-hmm. being celebrated within these couple of days. So in verse 28, it says, Then they led Yahshua and from Caiaphas to the praetorium uh, courtroom as it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should be defiled, contaminated morally, but th- that they might eat the Passover. Mm-hmm. Now, here goes to my point again about people like to use the Last Supper couldn't have been a Passover because Judas went out with the money, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The Passover is a preparation day, okay? The Jews know that. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to go into the praetorium because they didn't want to be corrupted by being in a heathen praetorium, Mm -hmm. okay? Dealing with uh, Pontius Pilate and the other guys Mm -hmm. because they were going to eat their Passover that coming night, which is the 15th, Mm -hmm. right? But they knew this was the 14th because the 14th has always been a preparation day. Mm -hmm. It's not a high Sabbath day, Mm -hmm. but it's still the Passover, which is to be treated as a memorial. So they were honoring that in that way so that they don't become corrupted. So when they sit to eat their so-called Passover on the 15th, they would be clean. Uh, Okay, John, good point. I can understand them. Sure. Doing what they're doing. Uh Uh-huh. Sure. But let's talk to the ones who say they believe in Yeshua. Right. Why aren't you keeping Yeshua's Passover? Why are you keeping theirs? They don't even believe in him. That's true. They don't even acknowledge Mm -hmm. him. So why are you not acknowledging him then? Exactly. That would be my question. Right. And that's the whole point of this exercise. Yes. What we're going through. Yes. Why don't you keep it when Yeshua kept it? Exactly. 
Don't pretend you're doing it and you're doing it and you're honoring somebody who don't even believe. You following people that don't even believe in the Messiah. Exactly. Don't even have not even received his and spirit. They, and they have taken Yahweh's, Yahshua's people who claim to believe in him and duped them into keeping the 15th and cutting a covenant on their day. In more ways than one. In more ways than they one. They got them. You, you said the scriptures. Uh, uh, full well you reject the commandments of Yahweh that you might keep your own tradition. They follow them down the road in the seventh month and call that the new year. When this scripture say this is the beginning of month. Exactly. Hmm? Exactly. But they'll tell you the seventh month is the beginning. Why do we follow them? Why do we? Follow them? If we say we have the spirit of truth in us, and Yahshua said they don't have the truth. Yes, they're their father, the devil. Yes, we're not condemning them. The, we're saying doctrinally, not as right, individual right, people. Exactly, doctrinally, it, the truth, they're getting their doctrine from the devil. Exactly. We're going to cover a little bit of that mm -hmm. as we go along. So in verse twenty-eight, oh, I read that already. I'm sorry. John nineteen fourteen, the mm -hmm. Jews pass over, not Yahshua's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, it was the preparation day of the Passover, mm -hmm. and about the sixth hour, he said to the Jews, Behold your king. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, in Acts chapter 12, verse 3 through 4, Passover week of the Jews. Here's that terminology mm -hmm. that differentiates the difference between Yahshua's Passover, mm -hmm. Last Supper, mm -hmm. and the Jews. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the day, it was during the days of unleavened bread mm -hmm. that is uncorrupted Passover week of the Jews. Mm -hmm. They didn't follow the Jews. That's why he makes the distinction. It's of the Jews. Mm -hmm. They didn't follow them. They followed Yahshua. Mm -hmm. But today we want to follow the Jews. We don't want to follow Yahshua, as you said. Mm -hmm. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison, delivered him to the four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover week, mm -hmm. your eight days of Passover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my guess is they would have brought him to, um, they would have brought him there on the 23rd of Nisan. Mm -hmm. Because their Passover, their Passover week would have ended on the 22nd of Nisan. Mm -hmm. So it's after that. Mm -hmm. So they would have had to been on the 23rd. Yes. Because their last day would have been a high holy day on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. But the 21st is the high holy day. Mm -hmm. they Friends, we got to get our calendars straight. Mm -hmm. We got to get our days straight. And they we got to get the events straight. They are not as neither yeah. today. Neither. So you picked First uh, Corinthians eleven twenty three through twenty eight, mm -hmm. and uh, what you're saying is their coming together was not honoring the Messiah, mm -hmm. and, and that that is part of the core question of this whole thing that we're presenting today. Mm -hmm. Are you honoring the Messiah by doing it on the fifteenth when he didn't prescribe it mm -hmm. on the fifteenth? Mm -hmm. So verse 23, for I received from the master that which I delivered to you, that the master Yahshua on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread of the showbread that is unleavened. Mm -hmm. There you go. On the same night that he was betrayed yeah. by Judas. Huh? The Passover is a 24-hour period. When are you eating your supper? Right. Mm -hmm. On the night that he suffered? Before he suffered, on the night he was betrayed, or the night after he... Yeah. yeah. Verse 24, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, take, mm -hmm. eat, this is my body, which is broken, with a broken, humbled mind, mm -hmm. which deals with what you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the taking you back to where you came from. Yes. That's a broken mind. Mm -hmm. If you refuse to go back to what brought you to this in the first place, you don't have a broken mind. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That breaking of the bread, not tearing, breaking mm -hmm. of the bread mm -hmm. is symbolic in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. For you, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. In the same manner, he also took of the cup after supper as an evening meal, saying, this cup, 
which is the cup of fate, mm -hmm. is the new regenerated covenant mm -hmm. contract as a divisory will in my blood. Mm -hmm. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. See, a divisory will is... You're part, you're, you're listed on this divisory will. Mm -hmm. If you make it to the end of your life doing what he's just told you to do mm -hmm. and you fulfilled your end of the contract, mm -hmm. when you come up in the resurrection, your name is going to come up in mm -hmm. the book of life mm -hmm. and he's going to devise and divide whatever the spoils of the enemy is to Anthony. Mm -hmm. He's going to honor sin. his part of the contract mm -hmm. by Fulfilling your name is, is in that divisory will. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get everything that's coming to you. Now, on the other hand, if you refuse to keep his feast days, as he says in Torah, according to his prescribed time, in his appointed time, mm -hmm. not yours, but right. his, mm -hmm. you're going to come under another divisory will, which is that of the devil, and your lot is going to be divided in that period of time. So as Yahshua said, whatever... You did, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to give it to the guy that sold the 10 talents. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So stop wasting your time with the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread, the showbread that is unleavened, and drink this cup, you proclaim the master's death till he comes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whoever eats this bread, the showbread that is unleavened or drinks this cup, which is the cup of fate of the master in an unworthy, irreverent, and unfit manner mm -hmm. will be guilty and in a state of liability of the body and blood of the master. Baruch Hashem. Baruch you're in a state of liability if you're eating and drinking it on the wrong night. John, this... This this is a cutting. This is a separation going on. The sheep from the goat. Exactly. We got to realize where we standing at right now. <laughs> Which side of this offense we want? We want to be with the sheep or we want to be with the goat? It, it, he's cutting this thing, telling you who belongs to him. Even when he gets down there, we didn't even cover this part to the foot washing. Saying that if, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no, no power part. with me. Are we you going to allow the Messiah to wash your feet? Huh? And, and it's something going on with this Passover that we need to wake up to. The foot washing is symbolic in part mm -hmm. uh, because the journey, when you take of this blood covenant like mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. you're going to go on a journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a journey of righteousness, mm -hmm. discovering what is righteousness in that walk in that narrow path. Yes. And along the way, you're going to collect a lot of dust on your feet because mm -hmm. you're going to travel a long path. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the end of that path, your feet's going to need to be clean. Mm -hmm. And it's also symbolic of humility, of submitting to one another, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you love me, you love the brethren, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, you should have no problem to humble yourself mm -hmm. before your brother or your sister and wash their feet mm -hmm. when they've been on a long journey mm -hmm. of, say, trials and tribulations and difficulties. We need to come and bear one another's um, burdens, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's symbolic. But let a man, in verse 28, by let a man examine mm -hmm. by testing to approve or disprove himself so that so let him eat and drink of the cup mm -hmm. so can you truly say you can approve or disprove yourself mm -hmm. have you even thought about it that much in advance as the word is saying mm -hmm. so let's review the passover week as it should be celebrated so over here on the evening of the 13th, when it becomes the 14th, is when the disciples sit down with Yahshua and have their Passover, last Passover supper. And it goes all the way through, and that ends on the 21st, when the sun sets. That's eight days of eating unleavened bread. But from the 15th, right here at this vertical line, 
going all the way through to the 21st is the feast of the seven, seven days, days of unleavened bread. bread. But the day before that on the Passover is a day, day of unleavened day. bread. Right. So the Passover in the Moedim shadow picture is your redemption, mm -hmm. is being renewed in the blood contract for the mm -hmm. next year with the Messiah and, uh, and being covered by the death angel. So he has to pass over you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on the evening of the 15th, when the first day of the liver bread starts, you're celebrating coming out of the world. Mm -hmm for seven days mm -hmm. that Yahweh does not look at you as leaven. Mm -hmm. He looks at you as de-leaven. Mm -hmm. So it's accounted to you unto righteousness in advance. You're on day one. You haven't even gotten to day seven yet, but he still says you're on leaven. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But instead the Jews can join everything together in the eight days of Passover. What is the, What is Yahweh doing? Passing over the... The death angel passing over you for eight days? Mm -hmm. That's a change in the Torah. Yes, it is. Which we read earlier, you're not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So down here below, the Jews, as we already read, mm -hmm. said they wouldn't go during this period of time here, would not go into the praetorium so they didn't defile themselves because they're going to eat their Passover right here on the 15th, mm -hmm. which is most of what people in the body of Messiah are doing today. And they're going all the way. So I want to ask those people out there doing that. Are you keeping eight days according to Jewish tradition? Because if you are, you have to declare Nisan 22 as a holy day. Mm -hmm. If you're keeping it on the 21st as a holy day, you're missing one day. You're coming up short. Mm -hmm. So you better readjust your calendar and do it like the Jews. Oh, yes. If you want to bite into that one. Mm -hmm. You got something to say? No. No, sir. still no. Okay. All right. So in Galatians 4, 24 through 26, does eating on the 15th make a covenant of Hagar, which is Talmudic Judaism? Because <laughs> this is what Paul's addressing. Mm -hmm. So breaking in in verse 24, he says, which things are symbolic mm -hmm. in the opposite sense? That's the key. Mm -hmm. In the opposite sense. For these are the two covenants or contracts. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, mm -hmm. a ceremonial slavery, which is Hagar. Mm -hmm. Okay? The concubine of Abraham, not of the Abrahamic covenant. Mm -hmm. See, the Abrahamic covenant is of faith. Right. But what the Jews are doing is not of faith. Mm -hmm. It's ceremonial slavery. Right. So as a, as a believer in Yahshua, if you're eating on the 15th, you're you're in bondage to ceremonial slavery. Because mm -hmm. they changed the ceremony from the 14th to the 15th. Mm -hmm. For this Hagar, in verse 25, is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which was called Hagar in their day and corresponds and answers to Jerusalem, which is where the Jews reside. What, which now is in their day and is in bondage as a voluntary slave with her children. Mm -hmm. So when you do this mm -hmm. and you're doing it opposite of what Yahshua has commanded, as we've already laid out, okay, you're doing it as a voluntary slave mm -hmm. of subservancy to Talmudic Judaism, mm -hmm. which technically means you have bitten into the covenant of Hagar. Mm -hmm. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Mm -hmm. So you pick 1 Corinthians 10, 18 through 21. Whose cup are you drinking? Mm -hmm. Observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Mm -hmm. What am I saying then? That an idol, a heathen god, is anything? Or what is offered to idols? as an image of to that God is anything rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons as a deity and not to Yahweh. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons, a supernatural spirit of a bad nature. Mm -hmm. So when you come on the 15th and you take of that cup, mm -hmm. you're, you're, sub, you're submitting yourself to a heathen God mm -hmm. because 
again, as I said from the beginning, all the world's religions come from Babylon. Mm -hmm. Babylon is filled with heathen gods. Mm -hmm. So when you come on the 15th and the Jews change it from the 14th to the 15th, mm -hmm. that's Babylon. That's confusion. Because mm -hmm. it's not in order with, ta with Torah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot drink the cup, which is the cup of fate of Yahweh, and the cup, the cup of fate of demons. As a deity, you cannot partake of Yahweh's table, as you were saying earlier, for mm -hmm. food, mm -hmm. and of the table for food of demons. You can't eat. You got to choose your table. You got to choose it. Who are you going to eat with? You going to eat with Yeshua? Or are you going to eat with the other people over here on the 15th? Whose table are you going to eat from? Um, Paul started out in there in in in, in um, Corinthians by saying... Um, he don't want us to be ignorant how all our fathers passed under the cloud and in the sea were all baptized unto Moses. And they did. They ate the same spiritual meat and drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from that rock, which was Messiah. Whose cup are you drinking from? Are you drinking from the Messiah? Because Everything that's been laid down up until this point is Messiah with his hands stretched out saying, come to me. I'm glad you said that. I didn't put it in here. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Revelation, which I retranslated from the Greek into the English, mm -hmm. which is on YouTube. In, in, in Revelation chapter 3, Yahshua mm -hmm. addresses the Lady Odysseus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's interesting, of all the churches, he only addresses the Lady Odysseans in this way. Mm -hmm. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Mm -hmm. He who opens mm -hmm. and lets me come in and dine with him. Mm -hmm. And that word dine mm -hmm. with dine mm -hmm. is the evening meal. Mm -hmm. He will receive the life. Okay, mm -hmm. he'll be preserved. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Lady of the Scenes is the last era, which is the one we're in now, mm -hmm. where all these people have become so Ladyonistic mm -hmm. in their thinking that they have so much apathy that they don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. But during the tribulation, those people are going to get their last chance. He's telling them, I'm knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. Come in and dine with me and reconstitute your Passover blood covenant mm -hmm. on the 14th. Mm -hmm. That last year before he destroys Babylon, mm -hmm. March, April, somewhere there, when he destroys it in September, October, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's your last chance. Mm -hmm. you got roughly six months mm -hmm. to get your butt straightened out. Mm -hmm. Eat this meal with me, mm -hmm. and I'll come in. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And open your eyes. Right. To all this. So we're making that same appeal right now. Mm -hmm. It's not tribulation yet, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to come in and eat that evening meal mm -hmm. and reconstitute your contract. Mm -hmm. All right. Eating the meal on the 15th signifies accepting of the, co of the covenant of Hagar. This is the spirit of Talmud of Judaism. It is not the new covenant in his blood. It means you have cut a different covenant. Mm -hmm. If you're eating and drinking on the 15th. Yes. Matthew 16, 11 through 12. Exercising our minds to comprehend. So in verse 11, it says, how is it you do not understand and exercise your mind to comprehend? Mm -hmm that I did not speak to you concerning bread, mm -hmm. but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, people, mm -hmm. pay attention. Mm -hmm. When you go to Judaism, it's the bread of extortion. Mm -hmm. They have captured you and have power and have brought you over they to their way. You. <laughs> What'd you say? They corrupted you. They them. corrupted you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And we they can't see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that couldn't have happened to me. 
Mm-hmm. I'm too smart for that. Mm-hmm. You tell me you're smarter than the devil. Mm-hmm. You're smarter than the Jews. Because mm-hmm. when you look at what the Jews teach, they're awfully smart. Oh, they have exalted these teachers today so high that no, nobody else can have what they have. You no, know, of course not. Um, they got they got more knowledge, more schoolings, all these degrees, degrees all these right. plaques, uh-huh. you know, and they travel and they so, you know, the crowd's so big in their buildings that there's no way right, that you, they can be wrong. But, but John and Anthony over there, what do you have? Nothing. Yeah. We have the spirit of Yeshua. We have the spirit of truth. And know and that we have it. The scripture <laughs> says... I did not call the mighty mm-hmm. of the world, but I called the, the weak base. and the base things mm-hmm. to confound the mighty. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. We're not trying to be arrogant. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. Disprove this. Yes. You ain't going to disprove it to me. I've been doing this too long. To yourself. Test the you, because at the end of the day, it just comes down to being mm-hmm. honest with yourself. Okay? So let's go on here. Uh, then they understood that he did not tell them to be aware of the leaven of bread, but mm-hmm. the doctrine mm-hmm. of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Whose voice are you listening to? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you picked also Second Chronicles 18, verses 19 through 22, about the lying spirit that prevails. Mm-hmm. And it says, then Micah said, therefore, hear the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing at his right hand and to his left. Those are his ministering spirits. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, who will persuade in a sinister way the silly one, Ahab, king of Israel, to go up that he may fall at Ramoth, Gilead, Mm -hmm. east of the Jordan? So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward, stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade in a sinister way to him. Yahweh said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out to be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got today. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, you shall persuade him also and prevail. You go. go. Go out and do so. Yes, sir. Who, whose, whose spirit have you been listening to if you up here until the 15th? Because mm-hmm. uh, the 14th has been there crying out for years to you. Crying out. In the strip, you can't even move it off the page. Mm-hmm. I don't care how they changed it in their discernment or in their doctrine. It's still in the book written on the 14th day at evening is Yahweh's Passover. Right. You can't get around it. You, you can't. can't get no way. But, hey, everybody get together in one voice and let's do it on the 15th. Huh? Yahweh sent the lying spirit out to him and it prevailed. And if you following them, it has prevailed in your life too. Repent. And believe the word of Yeshua. You know, that that happens because, unfortunately, in the body of Messiah, there's a gross uh, deficit of mm-hmm. being able to discern spirits, lying spirits. Mm-hmm. If you had the discernment, and we've talked about this a few times in some of the videos about who is your teacher, mm-hmm. you know, and false teachers and false doctrine. And we try to express all that in there. And... Uh, there's just a gross lack mm-hmm. of that gifts in the body of Messiah. Anyway, it says in verse 22, therefore, look, Yahweh has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. Mm-hmm. And Yahweh has declared disaster against you. Mm-hmm. So you also chose second Chronicles 30, one through uh, five. And you had expressed that Passover was readjusted to the correct time. Mm-hmm. Well, in order to readjust something, it had to have been out of order. Mm-hmm. You know, when your clock, your watch is out of order, mm-hmm. you readjust it and recalculate it back to the proper time. Mm-hmm. And that's what had happened here. Mm-hmm. So in verse one, it says, And Hezekiah, the strength of Yah, sent to all Israel and Judah, and also wrote letters to Ephraim, who is double fruited, and Manasseh causing to forget mm-hmm. that they should come to the house of Yahweh 
at Jerusalem to keep the Passover, the festival of passing over the victim without notice to Yahweh Elohim of Israel. What that kind of means is um, uh, without notice kind of has the implication of, in other words, Anthony, whatever you may have done, I'm going to pass over it, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to take notice right, to it anymore. Right, right, it right. has that connotation, uh -huh. put it that way. For the king and his leaders to take counsel to deliberate and resolve with all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover, the festival of passing over the victim without notice in the second month. Mm -hmm. For they could not keep it at the regular time because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated as ceremonial clean themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. Verse 4. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. Verse 5. So they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba, the well of an oath, mm -hmm. to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover, the festival of passing over the victim without notice, to Yahweh Elohim of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. Mm -hmm. And how interesting has history has repeated itself to this day. Yes, they did then, so they do today. But the books have been found and opened, and a proclamation is going out, John, in the same manner to call the people back to consecrate themselves that they can keep the Passover this year at its prescribed manner, you know, at the time that it, it should be kept. You know, uh, yeah, if they had provisions in the Passover, but it wasn't the next day, it was the next month mm -hmm. on the 15th. Because, well, but if they was out a long way and they couldn't get back in time enough to be able to keep the Passover, uh, Moses, uh, Yahweh told Moses to tell them they can keep it in the 15th month, but still on the 14th day, mm -hmm. never on the 15th day. But that was just for the Passover. They couldn't keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread at any other time. Mm -hmm. It had to be acknowledged in this season mm -hmm. at its appointed time. And so I found that one there interesting because if we open up our scriptures, he's always got a call out to us. He's always calling. If we, I run into so many people saying they want the truth. If it's in the Bible, I'm going to do it. Well, it's in the Bible and it's calling you and it's telling you what to do. And yet we still won't do it because we're letting somebody else. I was a victim of it. Oh, he's this person. He's got this this knowledge, he's a pastor, he's a bishop, he's a prophet. So I, know that I got to yeah, <laughs> I gotta go with him. No yeah. matter Yahweh's not talking to me, I better go to him and let him tell me what Yahweh is saying. Well, they they they're not telling you what Yahweh is saying because they're not telling you these things. You see it with your eyes, you're reading it, you're reading his words with your own eyes. And yes, somebody can come and tell you, you're not really seeing what you're seeing. The 14th, um, you're not seeing the 14th. It's the 15th. How can that be? How can you be so easily led away like that? You got to want truth. You got to desire it. David said, desire truth on the inward parts. You know, that right there, be careful what you wish for. Mm hmm because if you're really wishing to hear the truth, mm -hmm. Yahweh will give you the truth. Uh, yeah. And I'm, it's going to put your butt on the line. I'm a witness. And you're going to be faced with some decisions mm -hmm. like this one that is very difficult. It's going to rattle your life mm -hmm. from one end to the other. It's going to get rattled I'm because the devil is going to rattle it mm -hmm. inside of you. I'm a witness, John. It just, in many ways, but I could just use the Sabbath. That's a no. Who wouldn't want to yeah. go to work on the Sabbath, you know, because when you make yourself available to the, the taskmasters out there who you think pays your check, who you think prospers you, and you won't even give him the glory right. for prospering you, you know, you got to be available to them every day and bow down and you fear them. Why you can't fear Yahweh? The one who gives you life and strength. Mis misplaced devotion. Yeah. Yeah, Man. misplaced devotion.
Uh, look, I think at the end of the day, we're at a time now mm-hmm. you can't keep playing these games. It's not just about Passover. This is what we're on today. But this concept applies to all other areas of your life. But, the curtains are beginning to close. Mm-hmm. You can't keep playing these games yeah, over and exactly, over again. Exactly. It's time to become an adult now. Mm-hmm. And not a little child that's being fed by some guy that you can't even prove one way or another. He's telling the truth. Listen, mm-hmm. with that being said, uh, I want to shout out to whatever ministries that are out there that are teaching on the 14th. Mm-hmm. There's few and far between. I've seen a few. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name. One of them, Daniel Sanders. I don't remember the name of the ministry. He's somewhere in the mid part of the country, I think. And, uh, He's teaching on the 14. And I, I want to thank Yahweh. Mm-hmm. We're not the only ones. There are right. other people yes. that are teaching on the 14. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I just want to give a shout out to them. Yes. Uh, and, and you may want to look these different people up because they may have another angle on how to look at it that we haven't covered. Because mm-hmm. Yahweh gives you know information to different people. Same spirit. But this thing about the well of oath between Beersheba and... And Dan is interesting because we covered that Mm -hmm. when David went and made an oath Mm -hmm. to Yahweh Mm -hmm. uh, because he said to Joab and to release the people from Beersheba to Dan. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like a 50 mile distance. But this Beersheba is interesting because it's a place where oaths are done, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's kind of outside the scope of this. But I wanted to put that in there. So. Um, I just want to say before we get to the closing comments, if this if this uh, teaching today has been of interest to you mm-hmm. and you want to know more about it, it's broken up in a, in a few different ways. And I have uh, three other videos out there. One is the three days and three nights, the Greek Messiah versus the Hebrew Messiah, mm-hmm. which one. Mm-hmm. And you may want to look at that because that specifically deals with with the three days and three nights concept Mm -hmm. and establishing which is the true day of worship, Mm -hmm. Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that goes into great detail with that. The second one is a four-part series on the Passover being the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. And that one is like loaded with so much historical documentation as well as all the scriptures that Yahshua ever said about him keeping the Passover with his disciples. I go through all the scriptures and show every verse in there Mm -hmm. that supports that. And then there's another one, which is really hard for a lot of people to watch, but it's called examining yourself, a pre Passover exercise in honesty. Mm -hmm. We're told to examine ourselves before the Passover comes to see whether we're in the faith or not, because if you don't and you take of it in an unworthily manner, some get sick and some die. Mm -hmm. That's how serious this subject is, Anthony. And so in the closing comments, we need to wrap this up, Mm -hmm. you know. Go ahead and, 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 you know, whatever's on your heart, say you got to do well, what you got to say. For me, I said pretty much of it in the beginning. My beginning was my ending, and it really took me back to when I first believed this subject that he put in your in your spirit to um, go in and do it. To me, I'm, I, I can be a little biased, but you did a great job with it. And I've seen all the other videos also, but... This thing is, you got to choose who you're going to serve. You got to make your mind up who you're going to serve. And I just pray that you choose Yahweh above everything else and trust him because he is the only one that can sustain us if we obey him. If we don't, then we go down this rocky road of bounces and turns and twists and turnarounds and ups and downs on our own strength. But if we had to travel those roads with him, man, it'll be much more rewarding in the end when you come through it. So I praise him for that. For Rick uh, To everybody watching out there, I understand this is hard. It's supposed to be hard. When you're following the Messiah, it's supposed to be hard. Mm -hmm. but he also says that if you cast his burdens on him, Mm -hmm. he'll make it light. Yes. And I believe that 
that Yahweh gave me these legal arguments, these questions two years ago, mm -hmm. because it was time to take this Passover concept between the 14th and the 15th and really bring it up to a whole nother level mm -hmm. that I personally have not seen anybody address. Mm -hmm. And it was time to put this out there for everybody else to ask themselves the question. Yes. This night or that night? Yes. Does it make a difference? Mm -hmm. This covenant or am I taking that covenant? This has now been fulfilled in your hearing mm -hmm. and you're watching. And there's no way out of it now. If you walk away from this and you continue to do what you've been doing, you this has been fulfilled in your hearing and you're watching. And there'll be no more excuses about it. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe next year. Yahweh spirit may hit you and you may reconsider. I say, Baruch Hashem to Yahweh, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Our job is we're just delivery boys. We bring the package. We deliver it to the doorstep. You either open the door, you take the package, you open it up and you say, wow, this is incredible. I can use this. Mm -hmm. Or you say, you know what? This is garbage. And you throw it into the garbage. Once it's handed off to you, it's not our problem anymore. Mm -hmm. We've done our job. Yes. Our hope and our passion is that you truly sit down and be honest with yourself mm -hmm. because it is pre-Passover season and you are supposed to be honest with yourself and that you're tired of being lied to by people who don't have your best interest in mind. They may sound like they're sincere. And in their own reality, in their the recesses of their mind, they may think they have it right, mm -hmm. but it can't be proven against what we've laid out here today. Yes. And so we're hoping you're at a point right now where you're willing to say to yourself, you know what, guys, you're right. You're right. I've seen some of this before. I've been putting it off, you know, uh, but now I'm at a point where I realize the spirit is calling me to a higher level of understanding and a higher level of, 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 of a spirit walk and a higher level of accountability. Mm -hmm. And it's now time for me to get off the pot. Right. I've been sitting here too long and I've got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm at a crossroads in my life. You got the 14th and you got the 15th. You've got Yahshua's example of what he says his boys are going to do. And you got those of Talmud and Judaism, which is the covenant of Hagar. Which one are you going to be a bond servant to? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Yes. 14th or the 15th? Mm -hmm. This covenant or that covenant? It's your choice. We're not here to condemn anybody. Right. We're here to admonish and give powerful scriptures and information that makes our point, which in my mind, there's no disputing of it. We hope we you see it the same way that we're seeing it. We hope that you have come to a point now where you can't play this game anymore. Game is up. It's time to make the change. And with that, we say thank you for joining us. Shalom in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, who died for you as well.